Hi there, welcome back to my channel. This is Rosalind Yukich from Rosalind Health and Home. I am checking in because last week I did a collaboration video on our summer reading, um, kind of, you know, what we're choosing for our summer reading. And I have to say that it was a little bit, I don't know, I watched the collab video and the, the other videos in the collab playlist and I was like, man, you know, I feel like I really missed the boat. Like I really... Um, it wasn't so much that I didn't think it through because I spent a long time thinking about, you know, what am I going to do, you know, for summer reading, but, um, because up until now, I've not really made my kids do anything during the summer. Like we literally put everything away and take a complete break from school over the summer this year. You know, I'm wanting to do things a little bit differently. Plus, I wasn't sure if we were going to even take a summer break because I wasn't sure how well we were going to get done with our subjects. We, you know, we're doing more kind of year-round homeschooling, although <clears throat> our first year of year-round homeschooling, we are doing, you know, we are actually finishing mid, well, yeah, about mid-June. Sorry, something's weird over here. And so um, I was really kind of up in the air about everything that we were going to do. Like I had no idea what the summer was going to look like at all. And so um, everything is kind of, you know, changing a little bit. The kids are having, they're going to be going to summer camp. Um, one is going in July. The other one's going in, in August. They're not going to summer camp together this year. We're kind of at that really weird phase of... Um, our older son is, you know, um, becoming a teenager. The younger son is still not there yet. And so it's just kind of like that really awkward face a little bit. And so, um, you know, so that's kind of breaking up the, uh, you know, our summer a little bit. And I have a lot of things still, even though we're not going to be actively schooling, we're going to be actively learning over the summer, which is different than, than what I've done in previous years. I decided to do that because we came back in the fall, uh, this past school year, and, um, there was a lot of stuff that was forgotten and that had been, it hadn't been that way before. Um, before, you know, it was more of like everything sort of settled in and it was really different this past time. And so I thought, you know, I, I um, have a subscription with Rossi Mossy, their video games. And so I've downloaded all, um, I think up through grade six. And so they're going to have those and I'm going to require that they spend a half an hour, you know, they can pick a game of their choice. Um, you know, they can just go through whatever ones that they want to. And then I actually did decide to do a reading program after having watched through the playlist for the summer, the summer reading challenge. Um, I decided, you know, I want to do a reading list. And so what we did today is, um, I had the kids go through all of our books and, um, sort through. So I have them Pit, you know, make three piles, a pile of books that they don't want anymore. We still, still do have a lot of, um, like picture books and they were kind of out of that, you know, they're, I don't know, they're, it's not interesting to them for the most part anymore. Um, my younger son still like some of his picture books, especially like Thomas the Train. He's was, has always been a huge Thomas the Train fan. And so there are a few that I think are really nostalgic for him. And so he's hung on to those and the rest we're giving away. Um, <clears throat> there were some other books that they've never read and they just really weren't interested. They were, they were given to us and they just really didn't hit their interests at all. There are some that they put in the giveaway pile that I put back on the bookshelf because either they're classics or, um, they're books that I think that we can use in the future. So, um, then I had them make a pile of books that, that they wanted to read. So they each made their own pile. And then, um, and then I had them make a pile of, um, books that they did necessarily didn't want to read this summer, but they still wanted to hang on to. So we went through all of our books and then I made, uh, I went to, while they were doing that, I ran to the store. Okay. So here I am in my car on my way to what would be the closest thing that we have to a dollar 
store. We actually have two of them of these stores, one right next to each other. Now, by no means is everything in the store a dollar or equivalent of a dollar, but it would be the closest thing that we could probably have to a dollar store. Um, both places have a lot of craft things, storage bin stuff, um, you know, home decorating things. Um, they are both super fun places to go. I can easily go and drop a cool $30 a trip. So I try not to go very often, but um, this is where I'm going to pick up the plastic basket-like looking bins. I have, this is the worst part, is I have an idea of what I want to get. And whenever I get an idea in my mind of what I want, that's when I usually can't find what it is that I want to save my life. But, you know, I am keeping an open mind and um, I'm not going to be particular about it, you know, not terribly particular about it. I do want it to look somewhat neat because it will be in these uh, bins will be in the main part of the house but I have now arrived I'm gonna go ahead and go okay so we got home and I labeled each of the bins as you can see here and then we started to fill them up with our books now I went on to teachers pay teachers and um, grabbed a free uh, a free reading uh, log um, that they wrote all of their books on the first 10 books and so I told them I said every time you fill up this sheet then you get a prize out of the prize box now i always have a prize box on friday anyway and they love friday prize box um i usually put in there like big candy bars or like mini oreo packets um, sometimes you know really interesting like little trinkets or something like that for them they really like though the the candy bars and the oreos particularly because they're crazy about oreos um, and so they get something out of the prize box every friday well over the summer it's going to be every 10 books you read so i did warn them you might want to mix up maybe like the shorter books and the longer books um, that way you get to your 10 books but they have to read the book all the way through and so um, so we went ahead and set that up so that is ready to go school it should be over by next Friday and then that will start our reading um, and so we have those two two things going on in the summer another thing that I felt like I really kind of missed in that video was um, my own reading list and this is a little bit difficult because I won't lie. It's really difficult right now for me to find the time to read. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. I, one of the reasons is, is that I'm not just a homeschooling mom. I also work from home. Um, and the type of job that I do um, has me do a lot of uh, reading and reading of the Bible in particular, where I do a lot of uh, prep for you know, Bible studies and I, and I do my own Bible studies. And so with that, I'm already doing just a lot of, of reading and studying. Um, but also we are a bilingual home and I didn't grow up bilingual. So our second language is a language that I learned in my, um, sort of, you know, mid thirties. So, um, while I'm fluent, it's definitely, <clears throat> it still definitely taxes my brain and so by the end of the day, to be really honest, I am so fried. I am so exhausted because I'm going between the two languages all day long. Um, I homeschool in English, but my husband and I have never communicated in English except for maybe a couple of times before we started dating eons ago. And so, um, you know, I communicate with him in Croatian. He communicates, of course, with the kids in Croatian. And then I communicate with the kids in English. And so our home is just constantly in two languages. <clears throat> and so, um, and I work in English, but then like our church and of course all of our neighbors, all of that is in Croatian. So it's this back and forth nonstop. And so that's, that's exhausting for my brain. Usually, like if I read in the e in the evenings, it's like really easy type of reading. But I do know that reading is essential and it really shouldn't be ignored. And so I feel like I do need to get back to that. And I feel like over the summer is a good time to sort of, you know, build up my library again or, you know, create a, 
a stack of books that I want to read. So um, I make a lot of use of Kindle um, because uh, shipping here is expensive. And then I think it was last year, the year before last, um, they did away with the uh, import tax limit. And so if you order anything from outside of the European Union, then you get an import tax and it's a not cheap. It's like, I think 25% or some, somewhere close to that. So yeah, it's, it's, um, expensive to get anything shipped here from outside the European Union. So, um, any, you know, now books basically that I have are books that have been, you know, given to me. Um, so other than that, I order on Kindle, but here's kind of a few things that I'm going to be reading. Here's a book that I have been trying to read for years and it is Mighty Prevailing Prayer by, uh, Wesley Duell. <clears throat> I've gotten, um, a number of chapters in a few times. <laughs> a few times. Um, and I always start over because it's just always been so long since I picked it up when I start to pick it back up again. So, um, I'm, my goal is to get through that book this year, um, or this summer. I am actively reading, um, Homeschool Bravely and I'm reading that on Kindle. And then, um, I'm also reading Let It Go by Karen Neiman. Uh, that book is for my word of the year, Be Still. I, it's just sort of like with all of my reading, it's hit and miss. It's like, you know, I'm really good for about a week or so where in the morning I'll pick it up. <clears throat> um, and then, and then it just falls by the wayside because I just, you know, I'm doing so many other things in the morning with my Bible study. One of the things that I really like to do with reading is I like to do audiobooks. So I have a subscription with Audible and um, I, I have quite the library of books that I still have not gotten all the way through. So here are some books on Audible that I'm going to be listening to. Hopefully over the summer I will get through some of them. So the first one is one I've already started, Life in the Fasting Lane by Dr. Jason Fung. Um, another book by him, The Longevity Solution, also The Diabetes Code. Um, I want to get those through those three. I've done um, another book of Jason Fung on fasting, <clears throat> and um, there's another. I think I've done two books by Jason Fung. Um, I really like his material. Um, it's just so fascinating to you know read his books and even listen to his YouTube videos. Although you do have to be careful sometimes there's sometimes he uses profanity i've never heard him use profanity in his books but in his videos i have heard a few times where he's used of profanity um and then also um fasting by jensen franklin and so those are the audio books that i'm hoping to get through this summer um i feel like it's a lot easier for me to do audible because i can listen while i am you know doing housework and laundry and ironing yeah because yes i still iron especially in the summer i don't usually iron any other time of year but because i do tend to dry my clothes outside in the summertime to save on power um then yeah it's wrinkled when it comes inside it's not like you can't shake out the wrinkles <laughs> it just has to be ironed no no other way around it and sorry for the background noise we are getting some work done in our yard right now so um, so that is kind of what's on my reading list. Uh, some of it is, you know, very deeply spiritual, uh, some homeschooling encouragement. Um, there are a couple of homes, other homeschooling books that I'm wanting to get through. Um, but I just don't know that it's going to get, get there this summer. So I think I'll put that maybe on a fall list. My goal is to really kind of just carve out that time that is going to be able to stay there when school starts back again. That's really kind of my goal over the summer <clears throat> is to find a, find a time when I can just, you know, continue to stick, stick to it. Um, but yeah, some of that and some health. Um, I typically love to read novels and things in the evening. Um, I just, I have a few really favorite authors and they haven't put anything out lately. Um, Aaron Mancom is definitely right up there at the top. Um, so they haven't been putting anything out really lately and, um, and I've just kind of burned out on some of the other, 
I just am. But maybe I need to pick up some of my, some of the older books. Maybe, you know, some that I've already read before. Um, you know, I need to branch out. I tend to get really locked into one person, as you can tell. I have like, you know, five Jason Fung videos in my Audible. Um, <clears throat> or books, I should say, audiobooks in my Audible. So, yeah, I tend to get really locked in on one author and I just read everything by them. It's just kind of really how I do life in general. <clears throat> um, I tend to get really locked in on one thing and then I just, you know, yeah, go the distance <laughs> and, and I don't really branch out so much. So maybe I just need to do that. We'll see. I do need to start reading again though in the evenings. Um, it does really help me to sleep better. So that is it for me today. So this is the video that I wish I had done last week. <laughs> Um, but that's okay. It gave me content for this week. So there you go. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.